I'm the third employee of Bark & Co. Um, I moved to New York City four years ago uh, from Indiana and started working at BarkBox, this crazy little startup. Um, and when I first started, I, over the past four years, I've watched my company grow from three employees to over 200. Um, and in the beginning, I was doing everything from answering the phones to uh, running to the post office to starting BarkPost, which is the media company of Bark & Co. Um, and so in that process, I've been listening to a lot of stories. And I thought that there was a disconnect between what we were putting up online and the stories that truly capture what it means to have and love a dog in your life. Um, and so, you know, on Bark Post, we were publishing things about the last surviving search and rescue dog from 9-11 to, you know, the dogs that uh, survived um, Michael Vick's fighting ring. And we wanted to talk about our dogs, like the little moments, or like my dog, Pim, my favorite thing about her is every morning when I wake up, she is just so excited to start the day. And she's just like, gives little kisses, and she's just like so wiggly, and she's this 20 pound little bundle of ferocity that just loves life so much. And we didn't have an outlet for that on Park Post. So we wanted to do that with the book. Um, so once we realized that those were the kind of stories that we wanted, um, we started figuring out how we were going to do that. Um, the stories that we wanted in this book, um, we wanted the readers to be able to flip through the pages and go, oh my god, that's me. I do that as a dog parent. I do that as a crazy dog lover. Um, and so in order to get to those stories, we had to figure out um, a single prompt that would pull out those stories. Um, and so we came up with one single question that we put out to the dog world. What is the craziest thing you've done out of a love for your dog? Um, and we realized that that was the kind of question that we needed to ask to get to the heart of what it means to be a dog parent and a dog lover. Um, so once we posed that question, the stories were just pouring in. And what was so amazing about them was they weren't just, my dog does this really cute thing, or my dog does this really funny thing that I really love, and you would, you know, as a dog parent, I, I love it, but you might not. But um, as we posed that question, we realized that um, we started having these stories come in that summed up all of the heartwarming, gross, funny, sweet, and kind of crazy things that people do um, for their dogs. Um, and so <coughs> then Stacy and I were tasked with paring down thousands of amazing stories and photos to about 200 to fit into this book. Um, and so it's we- Very hard. Very, very hard. <laughs> Um, and we wanted to have a good balance of stories. We wanted to have the big stories, um, stories about dogs helping people get through anxiety, um, breakups, the loss of parents. Um, but we also really wanted to get to those really small stories, the stories that Stacy talked about with Pim, um, the, the little things that you do, those mornings with your dog, the way you squeeze your dog and they make a noise. Um, and we wanted those silly moments like that dog parents would, would resonate with dog parents, like giving your dog more presents on their birthday <laughs> than you give to your parents. Um, and so that was just the joy. We got to really read through so many stories and, and put together this amazing collection. And we have two other people that we want to thank here tonight. Um, our amazing designer, Jessica, she's here in the black and tan dotted <laughs> shirt. Um, we could not have had such a nice looking book without her. Um, and also Dave Coverly, who will we'll intro a little bit later, but he is our illustrator. He is um, our, our, the illustrator for Park & Co. He's a wonderful human. Um, and he flew here from Ann Arbor to be here. So we'll talk about him later, but we wanna get into <laughs> some of the stories of some of the dogs that are here tonight. Um, and so we have six people um, and we want to start with Gizzy, of course, because this is, <laughs> this is her place. Um, I think, I, I don't even remember when I met Gizzy, but it was like over two years ago. Yeah. And then Lisa and I became actual friends in real life because just kept running into her dog all over the city. <laughs> um, but there's no better way to start an event at the Strand than Strand's littlest bookseller. She's uh, the littlest bookseller here at the Strand. Um, 
She works upstairs in the offices, so if you ever come by looking for her, chances are she's not on the floor. Uh, she's usually upstairs with me, but if we're in and you ask for Lisa, um, we'd be more than happy to come out and say hi. Okay. So um, for any other dog owners in here, you're probably uh, going to sympathize with my story, which is um, I often give Gizzy a dog voice, and I often find myself talking in dog voice to other humans. Um, so here's my story. I'm so crazy about my dog that I've basically personified her by giving her a human Gizzy voice. Sometimes I find myself having conversations with other humans using only this voice, uh, which is entirely from her perspective. Gizzy voice is best used in awkward situations to help cut tension, bring a bit of humor um, to a stressful si situation, um, and even telling your best girlfriend that maybe the new guy she's dating isn't that great. <laughs> um, but this is true. There's been moments where my coworkers will come into the office and purely have conversations with me, or I'm sorry, with Gizzy through me, and then they'll <laughs> leave and then come back and be like, oh, by the way, hi, Lisa. So, um, but yeah, I'm really lucky I get to bring my dog to work, and she um, helps, I think, calm a lot of nerves here when you're having a stressful day. So it's fun to kind of share that with the rest of the people here. Thanks. Um, next up, I wanted to introduce Andy, <laughs> uh, short for Andromeda, who is making a oh, scene. Um, basically, one of the sections that we love in the book is called the butthead section. Um, <laughs> we all know a dog butthead. These are dogs who make mayhem, um, eat everything, destroy your underwear drawer, but in spite of it all, you still totally love them. Um, so Andy, Andromeda, is sort of queen butthead of our office. She does and eats whatever she likes. Her claim to fame is she ate a sandwich off of someone's desk. We caught it on our, on our camera in the office. She was double in size. Um, and if actually in the book, you can see her size double. Um, so I wanted to introduce Lisa, who is her lovely parent, to tell you a little bit more. Hi, um, this is Andy. Oh, no, don't do that. Okay. Um, her story is pretty short. Uh, and it's just you accept that your dog is a sandwich thief, but you love her anyways. Andy is a thief. She has stolen hundreds of thousands of meals from dogs and people. Great is her gaze with greed. Does she want Wheaton? Is it Wheaton that she wants? Okay. Sorry, Wheaton feeds her, that's why she likes him. Uh, that's all. Okay, next up we have Monty. Um, he belongs to Matt Hagel, who is on our finance team, and Monty his story is about being the underboss of the New York City Doodle Mafia. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, read the story. Uh, so myself and my wife, we knew that we wanted a doodle before we even had a dog um, for hypoallergenic <laughs> reasons. Yep, we wanted you. Um, so there are plenty of dogs on Instagram, like Samson the Dude and Hudson the Golden Doodle. Uh, who we had followed on Instagram before we even got Monty. And literally, the day we got Monty turned out to be the weekend we actually had plans to hang out with these celebrity dogs. And that's actually one of the photos that's in this uh, Doodle Mafia page. So here I will read. Uh, what it says. Uh, <laughs> I knew I wanted to be a doodle dad, uh, but I didn't want to rush it. Fortunately, just months after our search began, we found our dream doodle at Animal Haven. Our dream dog. <laughs> <laughs> our really good, well-behaved dog. He's, tra he's translating for uh, the dog. <laughs> to be honest, we didn't know he was going to grow to be a bear, and he hasn't had dinner yet. So. <laughs> Okay. So it takes a certain type of dog owner to, well, 
Okay, lick the page. <laughs> um, it takes a certain type of dog owner to be part of the doodle mafia. Uh, your doodle becomes part of a social life um, that's bigger than uh, you may know. Uh, you'll end up carrying your 50 pound doodle. So I think I wrote this around <laughs> seven or eight months ago. So you'll carry your 75 pound doodle onto the subway just just so he can enjoy an afternoon in the park. Monty. Okay, see ya. Aww. He really loves his mom. Aww. Um, you'll drive upstate with uh, a complete stranger who also happens to have a doodle. Um, is that even a question? Uh, we have playdates at the park, hang out at one another's apartment, uh, do doodle brunches, go to dog-friendly bars. Um, we even talk about going all the way to San Francisco, which actually Samson the dude just went to San Francisco and hung out with the West Coast Mafia. <laughs> so he's part of the East Coast Mafia uh, with one of his doodle brothers over there. So, real. Uh, <laughs> so the doodle mafia is not just about Instagram. It's not about followers and likes. It's really about a sense of community and a group of people who really love their dogs who happen to be doodles. Um, <laughs> There are all different types of doodles. We have golden doodles, labradoodles, bernadoodles, uh, you name it. Anything mixed with a poodle is a doodle. Um, so we welcome them all into our mafia. Um, I would say there's some hazing rituals, uh, but we really, the more doodles, the merrier. And that's our doodle mafia story. <laughs> Um, next, we have uh, the famous noodle, uh, <laughs> a loaf of bread with arms. Um, but Jonathan here has uh, an amazing story about how noodle came into his life, and we're all so grateful that he's here. Hi. This is, I cannot carry him for this whole thing. This is noodle. This is him. He thrived. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh, the pa right on my page. Okay, great. So hi, guys. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, tonight. It's been wonderful watching uh, Morgan and Stacy develop this book, um, and I'm so proud of them and happy to see it come to fruition. So, um, Noodle, wow. Um, so I adopted Noodle in January. And um, it was sort of after a, a couple of months that was a, I'm going to call it a dog whirlwind, uh, <laughs> where I got a job at Barking Co. And then a month and a half later, I adopted a dog. And they all said, they were like, you will adopt a dog very soon. I was like, no, I can't afford it. What are you talking about? And then I did it. <laughs> um, OK, so now I'm going to read my bit from the book, which they gave us two pages. This is, this is not me bragging. Um, OK, so my time with Noodle all began because of my obsession with His Royal Highness Doug the Pug, which I'm sure you are all familiar with. Um, last year, I went on an epic quest to meet Doug, which involved an Instagram exchange. I was catfished, or as I like to call it, dogfished. Um, this is a long story, which I will tell anyone at length later. Um, and a, eventually a change.org campaign was made um, in order for me to meet Doug the Pug, which ended up working. Uh, and I met Doug, and I met uh, his owner, Leslie, and she's wonderful, and that is when, I mean, the obsession, you know the, the whole pug obsession? Is anyone else pug obsessed? Mildly, yeah, like it, it's, it gets in your skin and then there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and uh, so I met him, and uh, Leslie and I have maintained a super healthy relationship, and uh, one day, um, uh, so I, I often tell uh, the harrowing tale of how I, a simple homosexual <laughs> from upstate New York with an affinity for wool socks and soft clothing, adopted an arthritic, toothless, um, borderline geriatric pug. Um, so, okay, so real quick, so we have an... Uh, <laughs> I'm like n reading this, but I'm also not. So we have an open mic we do at our <laughs> office 
we have an open mic we do, it's called Open Bark Night, it's a hoot. Um, and the very first time that I did it, I told, my, my bit was all about how I met Doug the Pug. It was nuts, you guys. Like this was truly one of the craziest things I've ever done. Um, and I told this story about how much I loved pugs and how I was in a position now where I wanted to adopt a dog. Um, and I now worked at a company where I could take a dog with me to work every single day. And I knew if I adopted a dog, I wanted to be able to be with it, be with him every single day and, and, and take care of him as, as uh, my mother took care of the dog that I grew up with. Um, and as soon as I finished my bit, which went on way too long, uh, uh, this woman, her name is Deborah, she ran up to me, like she ran up to me. It was, it was frightening. And she had a picture of a pug on her phone and she said, I have gone through uh, many interviews, but uh, I listened to your story and I am currently fostering a seven and a half year old pug named Noodle who needs a home. And I think you guys would be perfect together. And my roommate was standing right next to her and I turned her and I said, I'll pay. And she said, uh-huh. And two weeks later we adopted him. Um, and he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Arguably the most expensive. <laughs> There's college, noodle, and my life. Um, uh, that's it, that's the end of our story. He's fabulous, thank you for coming. lots of very sweet, funny stories. We also wanted to be sure to highlight um, issues that are near and dear to our heart, um, like senior adoption. Noodle's also senior dog. Um, and there is no dog that better embodies um, the joy that comes with adopting a senior dog than Dory and Chloe Kardagian. better. Um, hi, I'm Dory. This is Chloe. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to mangle this. Um, my story with Chloe is my raison de I took Spanish and failed. Um, <laughs> you can say it much better than me. Uh, um, for me, adopting a senior dog was really a lifestyle choice. I'm obviously not that active and I always fear a younger dog would require an amount of exercise and um, things that I just couldn't give it. And so I always preferred like older dogs that um, were a little more set in their personality and got their chewing your entire home up kind of out of them and uh, were just less likely to require constant supervision. And so when I adopted Chloe, I didn't realize that there were lots of senior dogs in shelters just like her, especially chihuahuas. Um, they end up there for a variety of reasons because they got old and undesirable, which I can't believe people do, but they do. Uh, because their owners are unable to care for them like Chloe's was. She was an elderly woman who just could not care for her anymore. Um, or sadly, because their owners pass away. Um, so I originally rescued a senior dog um, for my own personal kind of selfish reasons, but now I'm honored to be a part of this community that raises awareness and money um, for senior dogs everywhere. Um, we've been taking part in directly getting dogs adopted. We just raised $5,000 for phospis dogs, which are senior homeless dogs that um, don't have homes but need care. And um, it's just completed my life in a way that uh, I could never have dreamed of without her. So. <laughs> All right, and finally, um, we thought that there was no better way to end the night than with the last story in the book, and that comes from Dave Coverley. And Dave, Dave has been with us, he's been at Bark for longer than I have, um, kind of with his doodles, kind of instilling like the visual spirit of our company, and also he just understands dogs at a level that, you know, it, it, that we needed to communicate like how much we love dogs and also like to connect with people to um, make them realize that you know we are one of you too. Um, and so not only is Dave an extreme dog person, 
He is also a nationally syndicated cartoonist, and you can find his cartoon strip called Speed Bump in hundreds of newspapers across the country, and we're really thankful to have him here. Well, I am uh, very, actually, I'm very honored to be here because this book is amazing, and uh, it's, it's really, as a cartoonist, it's like I cannot believe how lucky I am to have met up with uh, Henrik, first of all, Henrik, the uh, president of, of Bark and Company, <laughs> then get to meet Stacy and Morgan and, and all these great people at Bark and Company. And, um, you know, I, I think the reason it happened, and I, I go, like Stacy said, I go back with Bark and Company. Um, I think there were three employees when they found me on the internet. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like dog cartoon porn or something, and all of a sudden they, <laughs> I, got, I get this email from, we've been looking at dog cartoons when we like yours. and. Um, and so I thought it was a sort of a one-shot deal, and they, they asked me if I would do some dogs for the, you know, the box you get in the mail. It has little dogs running around. That was, I, that was the first thing I did for them, and um, I thought, oh, that was fun. I mean, I got to be on a box, and then, then they, they kept growing, and they kept growing, and people like Stacey Morgan came along, and then they made it grow, and the next thing you know, it's just like I was just, you know, up to, up to my chest in dogs, and so... Um, I think the reason that I, that I feel so lucky and the reason it's worked out so well is because when I was doing my syndicated strip, um, I, I do a lot of cartoons about dogs anyway. I've always done that. I have grew up with two dogs. They were both insane. Um, and so I think that was sort of instilled in me is like this, this, this fact that dogs have personalities already. So, I mean, we don't, um, like my job as a cartoonist is not to uh, project a personality onto a dog. My job as a cartoonist is to let that dog's personality come to me. Uh, so I'm, I'm not trying to write jokes to the dogs. I'm letting the dogs write the jokes, and I'm just finding them. Um, and I think one of the reasons that uh, it works for a cartoonist and it works for everybody, and I think one of the reasons that we love dogs so much is that we don't, we don't have to be self-conscious with dogs. I mean, we, you spend so much of your life being self-conscious about stuff. Um, and with, when you're with your dog, it's just like this whole unself-conscious festival. You know, and it just brings out your inner doofus. And I, I, I go through this, I, went th I read this book, and I was, I'm looking at these stories, and I'm just so touched by how many people not just love their dogs, but the, the amount of give and take. You know, it's not just, it's not, like, I was a little kid, it's different generations, like, you owned a dog. You know, it was like this thing you had. And even my parents chained ours up in the garage and stuff, and I look back at it, and it's like, oh, my God. But it's really, it's really that they, it's, it's this symbiotic relationship that you have with dogs. And so that's why when I draw these little doodles for, for BarkBox, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at that whole idea that, that we're partners in this, this whole scheme. Um, and so that's why for me it's been, it's been just a real joy and a blessing to um, be a part of this. And I I'm, you know, I'm, I'm love the book, and Jessica's design is amazing, and I'm just grateful to be here. So thank you all. Um, so we wanted to, if anybody has any questions, um, we'd love to take them, um, but we are also going to have the dogs be giving autographs, and if you have any questions for the dogs too, uh, feel free to ask them. <laughs> questions at all? Raise your hand. What are your favorite, um, what are your favorite quirks that your dogs have, like personality <laughs> quirks, just funny little things they do? Okay, you guys are I'm on. happy to go. Um, if you notice, I have this pillow here. Chloe uh, isn't the biggest diva, but she does require that she be lifted via pillow onto the couch. Um, <laughs> if you try to pick her up without a pillow, she will run away from you. Um, so a pillow is the easiest way to lure her to any spot that you would like her to be. <laughs> um. So, Noodle, uh, my roommate and I like to joke, we like to ask, is he comfortable? Um, so he'll be on the couch, like on a blanket, and we'll just be, mm, he could use a pillow. Um, but he does this thing, so Noodle does this thing, when he gets really comfortable, he'll deflate. He'll lie down, and he'll just go, <sighs> and when he deflates, we know that he's comfortable. Um, so every, like, we have a little ritual where every night my roommate and I will just kind of, like, deck out the couch and do the very best we can to make sure that he's deflating, um, <laughs> which is a good sign. So I think uh, before dogs go to sleep, they like to dig at their bed. That's a natural thing they do. Uh, I think for Monty, a term that I 
coin uh, is called carpet swimming. <laughs> so it's not really <laughs> when he wants. He'll definitely do it after a shower, but random times in the day, he'll just lay on the carpet and just start <laughs> like swimming. So really? I call that carpet swimming. Um, Andy lies, but she does it badly. <laughs> so she sometimes we go outside, and I want her to go to the bathroom. So I'll say, "Please go to the bathroom," and she'll squat, but nothing will come out. And then she'll run off like she did stuff, except <laughs> she didn't do anything. She just squatted and pretended to do it. Uh, she also acts like she's upset when she's not. Like right now, it seems like she's upset, but she's not. She just wants food. <laughs> Um, and for me, Gizzy's ears are super expressive, and so uh, one of my favorite things is you could be in any room of the house, open up a bag of snacks for yourself or her, and she'll come running out, and you just see the ears first. So. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thank all of you for your contributions to this book. It's amazing, and we invite all of you to hang out and meet the puppies. <laughs> Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.